U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham urges Israel to bomb Gaza like Hiroshima. Israel must do whatever needs to be done to win its existential war with Hamas, just like the U.S. was justified to drop nuclear bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II, Senator Lindsey Graham has claimed. The Israeli military is facing increasing international scrutiny as its military operation in Gaza enters its eighth month, claiming the lives of more than 35,000 Palestinians. However, Graham argued in an interview with NBC News that Hamas is to blame for the bulk of civilian casualties and urged Israel to continue fighting until a decisive victory is achieved, no matter the cost. When we were faced with destruction as a nation after Pearl Harbor, fighting the Germans and the Japanese, we decided to end the war by bombing Hiroshima, Nagasaki with nuclear weapons, Graham stated. So Israel, do whatever you have to do to survive as a Jewish state, whatever you have to do. He added, while Graham did not call for the use of actual nuclear weapons in Gaza, he made a similar controversial comparison during a subcommittee hearing earlier in the week, referring to Israel's war with Hamas as Hiroshima and Nagasaki on steroids. The White House recently suspended the supply of some larger payload bombs that Israel could use in its new offensive in the southern Gazan city of Rafah, outraging the Jewish state's staunch supporters. Give Israel the bombs they need to end the war they can't afford to lose and work with them to minimize casualties, Graham said. But the United States, trying to prevent a large-scale Israeli invasion of Rafah, is offering Tel Aviv secret intelligence. In particular, it will help the Israel locate Hamas leaders and find the group's hidden tunnels, according to the Washington Post. The U.S. has also offered to help provide thousands of shelters to that so that Israel can build tent cities as well as help build food, water and medical delivery systems so that Palestinians evacuated from Rafah can have a habitable place to live, according to the sources who spoke on condition of anonymity to avoid revealing the secrecy of diplomatic negotiations. U.S. President Joe Biden and his senior aides have been making similar proposals over the past few weeks, hoping they would persuade Israel to conduct a more limited and targeted operation in the southern Gaza city. Israel has promised to enter Rafah with extreme force. Administration officials, including experts from the U.S. Agency for International Development, have told Israel that it will take several months to safely relocate the hundreds of thousands of Palestinians currently living in dilapidated and unsanitary conditions in Rafah. Israeli officials disagree with this assessment. Ukrainian officer warns there are signs of preparation of offensive by Belarus to Ukraine. Recently, the American Institute for the Study of War reported that Russia is deploying troops to attack Kharkiv. The shelling of this Ukrainian city has intensified. Is there a real danger for Kharkiv? Charter 97 media outlet addressed this question to the reserve major of the National Guard of Ukraine, a veteran of the Russian-Ukrainian war, Oleksiy Hetman. That's possible. However, the group concentrated there will not be able to conduct serious offensive operations due to the small number. The offensive is possible if the Russian Federation adds manpower and weapons, Oleksiy Hetman said. Will they do it? They will definitely do something. 
Provocations are local offensive actions. It should not be assumed that they just gathered about 70,000 troops there to sit in the field, do nothing and eat porridge. Ukraine should keep its units there. I emphasize that 70,000 is a huge group, but it is not enough to attack such a large city. What exactly will be there, we will see soon enough. Much also depends on how much strength the Russians will add to it. There are signs of an offensive, increased shelling, sabotage. They do everything according to the classics of the combat regulations before the offensive. But not always, preparatory actions lead to subsequent offensives on the ground. I do not think that they spend shells and missiles only for the purpose of distraction. After such preparatory attacks on the ground begin, he added. According to him, on the part of Belarus, it is even less likely that they will try to do something if compared with Kharkiv. However, we see in the Chernihiv, Sumy and Kiev regions the strengthening of the work of sabotage and reconnaissance groups. This is a sign of preparation for the offensive, but most likely they want to force Ukraine to keep a certain number of forces there. Nevertheless, the Russians will not take us by surprise. We will understand, see and prepare, he added.